The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Ten Minutes on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and also those watching on SoundCloud and also those watching on, um, on Oriented Neighborhood Television as well. A um, lot to look at this week. Um, got two guests coming up here. Um, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of Coach Jack Line of Oxford. Um, so hoping he calls in during the pod here. And also we're going to have a coaching interview with Coach John Herstein of um, North Farmington. So a lot to really look at when you look at the future for both the Wildcats and the Raiders coming into the season. So a lot to really look at heading into the season for both seat, both teams. So when you look at Oxford, and we hope to get Coach Zach Lyon um, to talk to us here about about his team coming into the season. All right, ready? Okay. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Tarina here. We finally got the coach of the Wildcats, Coach Zach Lyon. Coach, welcome to the pod. Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, when you look at Oxford last year, I mean, like, um, 1-8, and 0-5 oh in the red last year. Um, on Oxford, like, I mean, like, you, I'm looking at the stats right now. Um, 71 points scored, 229 points against. Um, recap Ox- Oxford season last year. Yeah, I think last year was uh, obviously a tough season. Um, we had a few elements that we were battling against, um, but I thought – I was proud of our kids for um, you know going back to school you know, after everything happened in Oxford and working hard as a team. Um, obviously, not the result we wanted on the field, but um, you know it wasn't it wasn't a lack of effort out there or a lack of willingness. So um, you know I'm excited about uh, you know kind of the foundation that those seniors left and then what our young guys can build on. So we were we were young last year, which is which is nice. Um, talk about obviously you're 10 and 26 and down to 18. Um, something that. It's on Oxford, like, um, just looking at the stats. Um, but you mentioned, of course, the um, young guys. You were a very young team playing in a very tough division. Um, talk about, you know what I mean, like, um, obviously, like, um, some of the positives with Oxford from last year. I think that's one of them. You know, we had a lot of young guys step up and play. You know, I remember, um, West Bloomfield game and, and counting nine sophomores and, um, you know, that's never a good thing, but it's also a good thing for the future. So um, a lot of those guys have a lot of experience. Um, you know, I think we have good leadership this year as a whole. So uh, I'm excited to see what we can do. One person I'm really excited to see play is Luke Johnson, your running back. Um, now, when you look at Oxford, a lot of people look at, um, I mean, like, I know what they call Penn State linebacker you. I mean, like with Oxford, I call it running back, running back, um, running back you. And the reason why I call this is because the tradition of the running back position is all thing from you guys, your family, obviously, you know, among others. Um, so, and I think Luke Johnson could be the next big, next back here. Um, talk about how Luke's been doing this off season. What's that? What um, was talk, the last part of that? Talk about how Luke's been doing this off season for you guys. You know what I mean? Obviously the next, the next great back of Oxford football. Uh, you know, Luke's a tremendous athlete. Um, you know, we had him, most of the uh, season, he went uh, out to Fargo for a little bit and wrestled for um, at national. So, um, you know, he's just been he's been staying busy. And, but obviously, wrestling being a brutal sport, he'll be he'll be ready to go here August seventh come training camp. Um, Luke's a smart kid. He's a great leader. So he's a good guy. Both at line running back for us. Um, obviously, you look at you guys. Of course, you know for good running, great running back like him, you got to have a very good offensive line. Um, Sean Wilson comes back for you guys. Um, talk about how Sean's been doing this off season. You know, Sean's put on some size. Um, he's always been, he's always had a lot of speed, um, uh, which has helped him, which has helped us up front with him. Um, he's very intelligent, but, um, I think him putting him on, putting on size and also being a senior this year, um, helps him step into a leadership role more, which he's already been, but now he can be a little more vocal. Um, so Sean is, is a tremendous as- asset to our team. Any other impact players to know with Oxford football? Obviously, you look at the Wildcats. Um, you have you have both Katie brothers, um, Jay and Drew, of course. Um, you know, and also and also, how's your quarterback situation looking? Um, yeah, you no, know, we have the Katie brothers, uh, both great athletes. Obviously, um, as kickers, they're tremendous, but they're also role players elsewhere on the field. 
Um, quarterback situations, you know, the nice thing about this year is I feel like we have a lot of um, – we have areas where we have depth and competition, and quarterback is one of those. I mean, obviously, there's one name I've been mentioned hearing a lot about. His name is Jack Hendricks. Um, how, is, how has he been doing this offseason? You know, I think uh, all of our quarterbacks have – have really pushed each other. Jack's doing a great job. Obviously a young guy, he can, he needs to continue to get into the playbook and, uh, and fully learn the offense. Um, you know, I think as a quarterback, you got to know where your answers are at all times. You know, Ben Bruski has been doing a good job and obviously we still have Eli Carpenter, who's another good quarterback for us. So, um, you know, training camp is where things happen. That's where the competition really takes off. Um, you start putting the pads on, and a lot of questions start getting answered. One question that I have with you guys is, of course, wide receiver and linebacker. Um, obviously, at, line, at wide receiver, you got Jake Champagne coming back. Um, obviously, the basketball stud that he is. And how's your linebacking situation looking? Uh, I think, you know, this is probably the deepest we've been in a few years, a linebacker of guys that can that can really play ball, fly around, be physical. Um, so we'll, we'll have a, a, another good competition at linebacker. Any names the OA Nation need to figure, need to know? Obviously, Luke's one of those guys in there, and then um, you know, I think the rest of the spots right now are are uh, up for competition. Okay, and then of course the second. How's your secondary? I mean, obviously you look at the secondary. Um, you got Jay Katie there. You got Demonte Travis there. Um, how is that? How's the secondary looking? You know, we don't have Demonte Travis, but we have oh, we, we have Jay. We've had Brody Moore for the last few years. We've had. Evan Geringer for the last couple of years, and same with Pavlock. So um, it's probably one of our most veteran positions um, going into the season. Um, when you look at, of course, how is the program strength? Obviously, the lower levels, I'm talking about the JV and the freshmen. How has that been going for you guys? Great. No, I think our coaches have um, have really put a lot of time in this year, and it's starting to show with their teams. Uh, our numbers are really good. So J- JV level, we're – Right, hovering around 30, but then our freshman level, you know, we're getting close to 50 kids there. So we had a big class come through, which is always nice. Um, and and uh, both classes are very athletic. So, um, and I got good coaches. Coach Lee, Chris is obviously a Lake Orion grad, does a yep. great job. With, I know him very with, well. Uh, does a great job with, you know, the student athletes and guys have been more than football. And same with Jeff Bull. He's just been an Oxford guy forever. So um, couldn't be more happy to have those two guys running the helms down there. Um, when you look at, uh, we're going to talk your, um, we're going to talk schedule here, um, coming up and I've looked at your schedule and I'm going to myself, Oh boy. So one thing that I, I'm going like one thing I'm looking at, I'm going to look at your non-conference first and you're opening up the year with Utica Eisenhower at Wildcat stadium, um, on the 25th and I'm going like, uh Oh, you know, and I'm not being mean here cause Ike does have a lot coming back. So. Uh-huh. What's your thoughts on playing Utica Eisenhower week one? I know you got experience playing Romeo, and that is their art, and that's Utica Eisenhower's arch rival. So now you get to play them week one, and at least you know the MAC pretty well, the MAC Red especially. Yeah, no, I think the last few years we've we've sought out those harder games, um, and we don't we don't want to play way down. We don't want to play. Uh, we just want to play good competition. So when we're looking at Eisenhower, the last. You know, 20 plus years they've had a great defense and um, an offense that that moves the ball as well. So um, it'll be a good test for us. I like the, I like our matchup there. It's going to be a very tough matchup for sure. Obviously, going against them for your quarterback and Preston Crum. Um, it's going to be a test for you guys. That's for sure. Yep. Um, now let's talk week two. You got Oak Park. Um, last year you played Groves. Now you get Oak Park. Um, what's your thoughts about playing the Knights and Coach Greg Carter? Uh, you know, Oak Park's very athletic. Uh, I haven't played them in a few years, so um, until I start looking at the film, I don't have a lot of thoughts on them. Um, really, this time of year, we're focused on focused on us, so we're developing Oxford right now, and then as we get closer to the season, um, probably about two weeks from now, a week and a half, we'll start moving towards, um, you know, Eisenhower, and then as we get going, we'll move on to Oak Park, but um, mm-hmm. worried about the task at hand right now, so I, I don't have much to say about many of the other teams other than you know, Oxford, and then a little bit about Ike. Yeah, and then I know, um, I just want to get your thoughts, like, on the, um, on the non-conference, too, before we talk division. Um, North Farmington, Week 8. Um, what's your thoughts about playing them Week 8? I know I know you're not thinking ahead, but just give me, like, an initial, your thought process. Um, you know, I, I, here's what I know about 
North Farmington, their, their coaches ran the prospect day that a couple of our guys went down to. And I think they're, they're very well coached. You know, the way that they coach their position groups is very detailed and they coach the right way. So um, I know they'll be well coached. And then of course, how did this come up here at Ford field? You get to play week nine um, against a Catholic league opponent. Um, how did that come, come up obviously for week nine for you guys? Um, you know, we're, and, um, we, we, I think hit up almost every team in division one and, um, wasn't much left for week nine. And then, uh, I think this is a really good opportunity for us to play at Ford field. I think it's a good experience for our kids and, um, still get good, uh, good competition in that league. Um, and then that, yeah, that'd be very interesting. It'd be a great experience for your kids going down there to Ford field to play, um, in an NFL stadium, Home of the Lions, of course. I know you got a, you got a, you've got had some experience playing at Ford Field with both the Saints and the Vikings. Um, yep. And, of course, you know, I mean, like, um, so it would be good for your kids to experience that, you know what I mean, to see Absolutely. what you came through, you know what I mean, when you played when you played at Min- in Minnesota and also at um, New Orleans. So I think that will be a great experience for them. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I think so too. Yep. And then let's talk the red. Obviously, you know, you look at the red division. Obviously, one of the toughest leagues in the state of Michigan. Um, so I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you like, like I've done with every other coach here that I've had on the pod. Um, initial thoughts. Um, I'm gonna start with Stony Creek first. So, what's your initial thoughts on the Cougars? Uh, you know, I, I think Stony Creek is a tough team. They, they came in last year and. Uh, I felt like they moved us around. Um, so I think that's one that we got to get up and ready for. And that's not going to be an easy game, though. Of course, you know what Coach Nick Marlow likes to do, obviously. You know, I mean, play time possession football, obviously. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup, to say the least. Absolutely. And let's look at Rochester Adams. Of course, obviously, you played Adams. You, I, spe- I remember those games back in um, 28. I remember those games that you played against them. It's the Veer is one of the hardest offenses to prepare for. I mean, so talk about Adams, what you see with them in your eyes. You know, they're always obviously well coached. They do a good job. Um, I think obviously the biggest loss for them is their quarterback. He was a stud. It's it's hard enough to stop the Veer, um, and then you're you're running into a quarterback that can run the ball very efficiently. So um, they'll be interesting to see. You know, I, I know they're going to be again well coached. They're going to play hard. And, um, there'll always be a good matchup. You know about Brady pre-scoring, right? You know what I mean, that they have. You know, so that'll be very interesting, that match with Rochester Adams. Um, West Bluefield, obviously, you know, different um, new coaches here in Zach Hilbert's. Um, what's your thoughts about West Bluefield? You know, West Bluefield always always has speed on the perimeter. They're going to test you um, in a million different ways. And um, I believe we have West Bluefield at home this year, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have I have not beat them yet as a coach, but um, hopefully this will be the year. When you look at a course, you know that'll be very interesting there. Um, what about Clarkston? I mean, obviously you look at the Wolves. Um, you know, both these both teams play each other in the youth levels, the middle school levels, and now they're playing the high school level. So, what's your initial thoughts on Clarkston? Uh, Clarkston's obviously one of those games that uh, seems like the Oxford boys rise always rise to the occasion. Um, it's, be- it's become more of a rivalry, I think, since I left than when I was here. You know, ever, it was always like Orient Oxford. And that seems like, um, you know, Oxford guys uh, feel the same way with Lake Orient and Clarkston now, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy, happy Ethan Clark is gone. He's been a great running back for them the last few years. So I'll be interested to see, you know, who becomes that next back for Clarkston. Um, obviously, again, another good test for us. And then the entire league, I mean, across the board. And then we get to talk the rival. I mean, Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the Dragons and Wildcats, no strangers to one another. Um, I've noticed it, a trend here. Since 2016, the road team has won every game of this rivalry since then. So, no, I was you, told that. I was told that a couple weeks ago as well. It's a, it's an interesting stat. It is a very interesting stat. I mean, like I'm seeing. I mean, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the past history since that year. You know, it's it's been a weird stat. I mean, like, when you look at Lake Orion and Oxford, you know, usually, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like even Steven, and then all of a sudden, like, um, like the road team's winning all this, these games. I mean, you, you notice that. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean. No. I mean, what's your thoughts on Lake Orion and Oxford? I know, 
I know we talked about it last year, but I got to get your thoughts on Lake Orion and Oxford. Look, I love the I love the rivalry. It's, it's it's one that's been around forever, right? As far back as I can remember as a young kid. Um, and again, this year will be an, another good test. They have had their had their athletic quarterback, uh, a bunch of guys that can move. So, um, you know, I, I thought last year was a tough fought game, and we just didn't have the juice. Um, basically, after the third quarter, it was a tight game, and then um, we kind of lost our bearings there. So, um, good year for us to rebound. Um, of course, when you look at the double trophy, of course, um, that and that's a very important trophy. I know not only in the Lake Orion community, but also in the Oxford community as well. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, so it's either going north north 24 or south 24. That's how I'm looking right. at it. Yep. Yep. Um, one thing, how is, how is the uniforms this year? I mean, obviously, um, no change to the uniforms, going yellow helmets still? Yep. And then the jerseys are the same, you know? Same jerseys. I, I I like that. You know what I mean. It's sort of it's sort of clean and pl- it's sort of clean and classic. You know what I mean. That's really been you know what I mean. Like the um classic with Oxford football. It's always been that classic look, which is looks really great and all that. You know what I, I mean. I, I mean, agree. I, you know, I, I think I think our our jersey combos right now are super clean. They look nice. Um, and and the kids like them too, which is good. So, uh, no change there. Mhm. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the um. On the um, youth levels, I mean, like, how is the youth levels going in Oxford? Obviously, you, um, you know, I know, you, I know that. Um, so, how how is the youth levels going over there at Oxford? Um, good. You know, I think this year we've had more camps than we've ever had in the past, um, and obviously we have a good OJW program in middle schools. We have um, good coaches down there as well. Um, but this year we we try to put on more camps than we would in the past. We did a total of three throughout the summer. I believe one in June, one in July, and then I think another one that was back in May, right at the end of school. So um, the more interest and intrigue you can continue to build in the sport, the better, not just for Oxford, but just for the sport as a whole. I think it's a good thing. I think this game provides so many opportunities to have life lessons, but also work as a team and um, all the things that go with the game of football. And obviously, before I let you go, Coach, um, before I get the final thoughts, um, when you look at Oxford, um, what is your expectations this year for the Wildcats, and what is your message to OA Nation? Do you have a dean this year, too? Grit. Grit? Yep. That's good. That's good. Um, that's a good That's a good mantra. Um, any final thoughts for um, OA Nation and expectations? Uh, I, I Honestly, I, I don't want to give any expectations. You know, the pads haven't even get, gone on yet. Um, I, I'll, I will say I like this team. They work hard. There hasn't been anything I've thrown at them so far that they can't handle. Um, so th- this this team reminds me a lot of the 2021 team that's just resilient. They just keep getting better every week. Um, so, so far, so good. I remember that 2021 team really well. I mean, like, a lot of people look at that team playing through a tough schedule and then, of course, winning some big, big games that they had. They beat Lake Orion, beat Clarkston. In the first round, um, yeah, that was really um, just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, with that team that year, I mean, that 2021 team, that was a very special group with the Oxford Wildcats. There, that team, I still remember. I still remember that. Um, I know at Chicago Brothers Pizza in Lake Orion, I know the owner really well. He's got like a, um, he's got that. Um, he's got a picture um, of the great Tate Mir and his and his words. And I know it's and it, it surrounds surrounds us all and especially around oxford yep absolutely okay. yeah, no I'm, that's what that's what i liked about that group and this group as well is you know they they didn't stop getting better once the season started and that's not what you want we're gonna get as possible get by the time eisenhower comes to oxford but we want to see continued improvement every single week which is what that team did and so far during summer that this group right now has been doing that that i'm looking forward to seeing you on media day on friday and also um I wish you the best of luck this year. Um, thank you for calling in this week, Coach. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Oxford Coach um, Zach Line here on the podcast. All right, we're going to take a break here. Um, we're going to talk uh, to North Pharmacy Coach I'm John Herstein here on OA Now. All right. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termini here. Um, we got North Farmington Coach John Herstein here. Coach, um, first time on the pod. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thanks so much, Amy. I really appreciate having us on. Um, when you look at North Farmington this year, last year you went two and seven, um, two and two in the blue. Um, 
He scored 171 points. He gave up 268 points. Um, talk about last season. Of course, you, and this, the stats here, you look at your 5 and 13 since 2021. So, what the heck's going on? Well, you know, we, we got hurt a little bit with the COVID stuff, kind of lost some kids coming out. Um, and that, that kind of set us back a little bit. Uh, two years ago, I thought we were a pretty good team. We played a really tough schedule in the OAA. Um, when you, you look, know, uh, you know, the OAA can be super difficult. Uh, you know, take, you know, uh, Rochester Adams into an overtime game the year they went to the state final. Took a, had a fourth quarter lead against West Bloomfield that we weren't able to finish. So you know, it it, it kind of is boiled down to that. We've had a lot of close games, but. You know, haven't been able to find a way to finish, and we're hoping to be able to get on the right track this year with a little bit more, more uh, experience compared to last year. And last year, we were a young football team, um, not just juniors and seniors, but experience-wise playing the sport, and uh, I th think we'll be we'll be a little bit better this year. Um, talk, about, um, talk about, obviously, when you look at you guys, obviously the – Injured to Ryan Shelby, that was a big, big, um, big reason for the struggles. Um, how has Ryan been doing this off season? He's done fantastic, uh, and, and really even last year, injured and towards his out and and rehab, but mad and uh, you know, really made a very, very quick recovery to the point where uh, the doctors kind of got cold feet. And he wasn't able to get cleared uh, in the time that he thought he was. And it was kind of back and forth. But, I mean, credit to the kid. Like, he did everything he could do to get back out there last year. And then this year, uh, between football and baseball and the training, he's done a phenomenal job getting in shape, uh, strengthening up his knee, and, uh, and being a leader for our team. Talk about, of course, some impact players that OA Nation needs to know about coming into the season for North Farmington. Well, obviously, we mentioned Ryan. I think he'd be the first one you'd want to you'd want to talk about. He's quarterback. Was a quarterback a couple of years ago? Uh, again, back to that tough schedule. I thought he did a, a good job there, but you know, experience. He gained some experience that year, and even last year, the the mental toughness part of it of uh, of the rehab. I think uh, you know, you, I, I don't think that counts for nothing. Um, and then, you know, obviously coming into his senior year, I think he's got a lot he wants to prove to show what he's capable of, to show what his team's capable of. And uh, so, um, you know, obviously very, very excited to see what he does. Uh, next kid would be uh, P.J. Gardner. Um, he's getting a lot of GLIAC interest. And uh, third year playing football, you know, back to the uh, inexperienced uh, part. He was on varsity the last three years, but third year ever really playing. And, uh and has done a good job learning the game and developing a uh, really phenomenal athlete, uh, state, all state, uh, long jumper, you know, 22 feet or so. And, and uh, really great athlete has good hands. Um, you know, excited to see how, how he can, uh, how he can really come into his own this season and, and, and take control of the offense and play in multiple positions. Um, and then Robert Bridges, he started for us last year as a split end. Uh, did, did a did a good job and he played defensive back too. Has really grown up um, as a senior. So uh, another kid to look out for. Uh, uh, Brendan Rice. Mm -hmm. You know he's probably the one that gets the most the most publicity. Uh, he'll be a, a junior. Plays O line D line. He'll be this will be his third year on varsity. Played for us as a freshman on varsity and. Uh, Starting to starting to really develop the game, develop his knowledge of the game. He's always been a good student of the game, but just kind of trusting himself and having confidence in what he does. Um, uh, it, I, he's done a good job this off season. Uh, did a great job the last couple of years, actually. Um, but I think this would be a, uh, a kind of a coming out year for him. I'm excited. Uh, when you look at a, when you, when you look at others, obviously you know um, you look at the running back situation. You look at the um, you look at, of course, the um, – how's your back end of the defense looking this year for North? Well, we got a couple guys returning, and, and Robert being a senior, but another uh, junior is Duke Blanche. Started for us at safety last, or monster last year. Uh, good hitter, 
good abilities. He also plays running back for us. Um, and, and probably be one of the guys that's one of the most steady guys on the, on the defense last year, he was very steady as a, as a sophomore. And I think this year his playmaking capability on the, on the defensive side will be good. And then we actually have a, a couple other kids, uh, you know, got a sophomore coming up, um, Terrence James, who, um, really has some flashes of, of, uh, great ability kind of reminds you of some of the old guys you had at Harrison, you know, the, with the likes of like Rod Hurd and, and, uh, people, but even before that, um, Jake Vento, you know, those mm-hmm. are the type of guys that kind of come to mind. Uh, um, guys that just have a good knack for the football can really explode and he's a good receiver, good running back. And, uh, I think he'll be competing to start in the secondary with, with PJ and, Robert and and Duke and several others. Um, what about Mel Coleman? I mean, like obviously, um, that's been a name I'm curious to see. Obviously, I kn- I remember what he did last year, um, against Troy when he played quarterback. Um, how's he been? Well, you know, he actually transferred over to uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Um, uh, so that's a big loss. You oh, know, you, you're losing a kid. His yeah, that's okay. You know, those things happen. Uh, his dad. His dad took on a role where he's managing uh, a larger territory, and this would put him more centrally located where he's going to be able to see him play. He's, you know, his dad coached with us the last, well, 20 years plus. You know, he's, he was at Harrison for a long time with us and then made the transition over. Um, uh, so he he was just hoping to be able to see him play, and he felt like this would give them the, the best opportunity where he'd be able to be around that much more. So we're going to miss him. You know, I, I joke with Mel, though, and I say, the worst part about it is his, his wife, Jean, was our booster president. And now, you know, we had to go out and find another booster president. So uh, it was a it was a triple trifecta of sorts of uh, of losses. But we w- we hope him nothing but the best. He did a great job in tra- track and field this past year, went all state in, in the hurdles. And uh, I think he's poised to, d- to really contribute over there. Um, when you look at, of course, um, you know, we're, let's look at obviously your um... – the um last year, which we kept last year. I know we talked a little bit about it, but what was your thoughts of last year with the injury bug and like you know when you look at when you look at <laughs> recapping last year a little bit here? Well, definitely the injuries hurt. We, we we losing the quarterback was huge. I thought the kid who stepped in, he hadn't played football in a couple of years and uh, was coming off a of shoulder surgery. He stepped in at quarterback Thomas Belazovich, and he did the best he could. You know, he did a job that needed to be done. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then the other kid that really kind of hurt us last year losing was Rayshon Matthews, who, uh, um, really good athlete who'd been a third, third year varsity, uh, starter for us, uh, played running back and safety. And, uh, so that, that kind of hurt too, among others, but, but, you know, ultimately at the end of it, you could blame it on injuries or this or that. We, we got to find a way to finish. You know, that's the name of the game. That's what we've always prided ourselves on is uh, hard work, discipline, you know, playing to the echo of the whistle, all those types of things. And and we didn't do that enough last year. We had opportunities to put teams away. We had opportunities to get wins in the fourth quarter, and we fell short, and that's the bottom line. And when you look at some of those games last year, that one game that really bothered me the most with you guys was that Caledonia game. I mean, like, I yeah. mean, like, I've never seen a, a John Hurston type team give up 60. <laughs> I've never seen that. Yeah. And I watched that game on Farmington TV 10, and I'm going like, and I'm watching it from up north in Caseville, and I'm going like, oh, my God, what the heck's going on here? You know? Well, they're, they're a good team. they got a good program. Uh, they're, um, they, uh, obviously made it to the state finals in division one. That's the other thing. The last couple of years, we've played teams that have been state champions in the state finals runner up. Like we, we don't shy away from competition at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, tough team, our kids, our kids, uh, I don't think we're mentally prepared. You know, they, they just weren't ready for that physicality and that speed in which they played at. So they got on us early and, you know, uh, and we weren't able to recover at all. Um, so that was that was an unfortunate lopsided loss that you know uh, against a quality opponent. Uh, they want to. They, they said they want a team of our caliber again. 
uh, for this year. So we got them week two again. So we open with uh, Birmingham Groves and then Caledonia. And we'll find out what we're made of. I mean, that, I'm going to break down the schedule here in a, in a minute here, obviously. But I know I noticed one of the teams that is not on the schedule. And I talked about this with them, Coach Jason Albright, um, last week. Um, and that actually two weeks ago and that was um and that was farmington um obviously your arch rival um what are your kids thoughts about not playing farmington this year you know or having the farmington cup this year well obviously that game means a lot to us and and our league realigned and so we lost farmington and we were hopeful to to be able to put them with where caledonia was um but it didn't work out uh uh, Caledonia wouldn't last out the contract. So, you know, without playing Farmington, which is unfortunate for the community, you know, obviously two high school town now, um, it's a big draw. A lot of people really look forward to it. It's been played many, many years in a row. Uh, you know, our kids are upset about it. Obviously losing, losing an overtime last year to, to Farmington, uh, left a sour taste in their mouth and, and they're looking forward to taking having an opportunity to go out and compete against them this year. Um, never know, maybe in the playoffs, maybe not. Uh, but you know, as, as you say, you can't take any of those opportunities for granted. You know, maybe the next time that a, that a North Farmington team gets to play uh, Farmington High, they'll they'll uh, really rise to the to the occasion. And you know, when you look at it here, I mean, that was one of the things that really shocked me was the fact that you know, when you look at rivalry games and you know, not seeing that battle. I mean, I've always enjoyed that rivalry ever since you came in to North Farmington, you turned that program around and that game in 2019 was just absolutely insane. You guys won that one 13 to nine. I remember that John Burnett touched down really, really well in that game. Um, I wonder if the current team remembers, you know what I mean? The memories of that, of that rivalry with Farmington. Well, I think they do, you know, uh, obviously they weren't in the school quite yet, but it, it was a big time game with Gary Slay there and, and, you know, big special special Olympics fundraiser uh, that we put together. And it was a huge turnout. So I imagine some of them were there. And, and they've heard the, the alumni when they come back talk about that game. That I think that was important to them. And, you know, even some of our kids from Harrison that came over to North with us, I think it meant a lot to them. Yeah, so that, that was a tough, you know, that was a fun game, fun game to be part of. And then, you know, the COVID year uh, was the COVID year. We were able to, to, to get a win. And then two years ago, we... Uh, I think we we're just more experienced. Like I said, I thought we had a, a nice team, just tough schedule, and and uh, we were able to get them. Then last year, the overtime loss was uh, definitely uh, uh, um, gut wrenching. And let's look at your schedule this year. I mean, obviously, you know, we talked. Um, I want to get your thoughts on each team here, um, and then your and then your conference. Um, you know, and then obviously, you know, I mean, like you can feel free to go into detail about some of these teams if you want to. Um, let's talk Groves. Obviously, we know that matchup week one. That's going to be really interesting between you guys. I mean, Groves, you know, is a quality team. Um, what is your initial thoughts when you see Groves on the schedule week one? Well, it's exciting. You know, they're they're a state semifinalist last year. Uh, uh, we played them two years ago. We were able to beat them. Uh, and then this past year, lost a tight game, uh, had an opportunity to go down and tie it up in the fourth and, and, uh, fumbled the ball in the one. Um, but, uh, you know, good program. Coach Flaherty's done a, a very good job there. Uh, he's got good players. Uh, you know, obviously the Avery gosh kid, you know, has offers from Ohio state, Alabama, you name it. Um, so you know that they're going to be prepared, uh, you know, and, and hats off to their kids. I think they buy into the program and, and play mistake free football. They, they do a nice job of that. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be a tough game. It'll be, it'll be fun though. You know, it's kind of, that's kind of developed into a little bit of a rivalry game itself with us and, and them. And even going back to our last couple of years at Harrison, after they announced, they, you know, had gotten us a couple of times and they were tight games. So, uh, that's an exciting one. Um, week two, we talked about Caledonia. Um, made Division One state final last year. You played them last year. We talked about that disaster um, over at your place. Now I get to go over there. Um, what is your thoughts about Caledonia? Brand new, fe 
Right. Yeah, it's a brand new field. They're, they're dedicating new turf field, so I'm sure it'll be a huge turnout. Their their coach is excited for that. Uh, you know, it's a one high school town with you know whatever a bunch of students in the school, and they'll uh, I'm sure there'll be a huge crowd. And it'll be a good opportunity for our kids to uh, to go out and play and compete and uh, redeem ourselves from last year. And especially for you guys having to go down, having to go west, and that's not an easy thing for a team having to go west out up by 96 i mean like that's going to be a difficult task for um you guys have you thought about maybe like you know what is your initial plan you know what i mean to go to to caledonia you know what i mean that is not an easy trip at all well you know a couple years back i got to live out one of my dreams coaching some high, coaching some playoff football in january uh during the covid year so we had a nice long trip up to uh uh, Trevor City Central. A remember that. Back, I remember that. Uh, for regional finals, and and so you, you know you, we've been around it. We've done it. Uh, you know you, you got your, you got your process. We'll get there. Keep the kids on the same schedule that we're always on. Have a have some food planned out. Have you know that type of stuff ready to go. You know, make a little bit of a uh, a college style road trip, if you mm-hmm. will. You know, that's kind of a neat thing for some of those kids that. Uh, might not get the opportunity to go on and play in college. I remember talking to taking, my taking charter buses and everything. So <laughs> I remember talking to my co-host Ian Locke about this. Um, going when we when he talked about previewing that game with Traverse City Central going up. Um, I wonder if you could see Lake Grand Traverse Bay or Lake Michigan from Traverse. I mean, because I always wondered that. You know, when you go to Thurby Field and all that. I mean, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit inland, so you, you can't see the you can't see the bay or anything like that. But the stadium is fantastic. It's an old, you know, uh, you know, old big stadium with you know bunch of seating, which uh, the COVID was limited, but uh, a really cool environment. No tracks. So the fans are kind of right on top of you. I, I can only imagine during uh, a Traverse City Central, Traverse City West game, uh, how exciting uh, that that place would be. You know, I can only imagine it rocking pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, going to be... Kind of reminds me of the old At- Atwood, you know, uh, Windsor, or, uh, Windsor Stadium and stuff like that. Oh, I remember those stadiums. I mean, the, that is yeah. just insane. Um, so talk about, I mean, um, talk about um, you got Oxford on the schedule here. So talk about Oxford a little bit here. Yeah, so uh, this will be the second time we've played them since we're at North. Uh, a couple of years ago, we played them out at Oxford um, during the COVID year, and uh, you know, Coach Zach Lyons seems like he's he's doing a really good job there. The kids are coached up, um, getting enthusiasm going uh, for football, and and we're going to get an opportunity to play them. I want to say week eight, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and it'll be good to be out at Oxford again. Uh, we only have four home games this year. But, um, but uh, you know, that I think it's a great stadium. It's a really great environment. They get big crowds. They're excited about football. They got the, the video board. We're, we're hoping to get one of those in another year. And uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be a good, good, good game for us, good competition. See how we fit fair against the team in the OAA Red. So uh, I kind of like, like that part of it, too. The last couple of years we've played a team in the OAA Red each year. Uh, which has given us an opportunity to kind of see where we stand within the league. Last year we played Lake Orion and and this year playing Oxford. So it's uh, I it, think it makes for a fun schedule. It'll be very interesting there. Um, you play Pontiac on the schedule as well. So talk about Pontiac a little bit in your eyes. Yeah. So we got Pontiac. Um, I know they're, they're working on rebuilding the program and, and, and getting it going. Uh, they've got some really good talent over there. Uh, uh, it'd be a matter of just kind of getting all the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, I, I think we have them for parent night. It's our last home game, so it'll be an exciting time for our, our young men. Mm-hmm. It'll be very interesting. And then you have Bloomfield Hills Week 9. Um, played them last year, lost a tough one to them. Um, so what's your thoughts on um, playing the Blackhawks? Well, we get, to, we get to go out to their place this year, uh, you know, another – Another larger high school, you know, around 2,000 students and playing, you know, an OA white team. Uh, they, they, they know how to win. They know how to compete. They know how to coach. Um, I, I think it'll be a good game. Uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be a good challenge. You know, just 
give us another opportunity to go out and play some football and uh, and and see how we can compete against uh, teams across uh, across the league from us. Um, and then let's talk about the division, the blue. Um, obviously, it's a very tough league this year when you look at the division. I mean, you got you got um. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna let so I'm gonna let your thoughts on each team in the division. Um, what are your initial thoughts? Um, you know of of, of all these teams. So it's the same as the non conference. So what's um? So I'm gonna so I'm gonna give you a team and like and give me your give me your thoughts and everything. You know, feel free sure. to go as long. You know what I mean? Um. Oak yeah. Park, you know. Oak Park. Well, I mean, love Coach Carter. Known him a long time. Uh, we've had great competitions with him over the years, going back to Harrison, and even a couple years ago when we played him out out at their place, uh, lost a tight game to them. Um, uh, they they uh, they they do a good job. Um, I think I would think that they're going to be much improved from last year. I know they were real young. Uh, so they're going to be a little bit more seasoned, which which will uh, bode well for them. And and obviously coming down from the the white to the blue, I, I would think that they, they they'll have a good opportunity to compete for the league championship. Uh, despite them going 0 and 9 last year, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that uh, I wouldn't count count them out as a uh, as one of the top teams in the league. And when you look at Oak Park last year, the yes, the struggles were there. Um... I'm curious to see what the Knights look like coming into the year. And I think a lot of people are, when you look at the blue, I mean, cause it's a tough division. I mean, like clearly with Oak Park coming down um, to the blue, mm-hmm. um, you know, with you guys being healthy. Um, so it, it'll be very interesting when you two, when you both the teams meet. Um, I think that's at, I think it's at Night Valley. This at year. North. Oh, it's at Ron Holland. So that'll no, be very it's, interesting. It's at Ron Holland Stadium. Yep. So that'll be yep. really interesting. Yep. I mean, I know Farmington TV 10 will certainly have that game for sure. Um, shout definitely. out to Farmington TV or TV 10. Shout out to Farmington yeah. TV 10. Um, they do a great job broadcasting your McGuckin, games. Sean McGuckin does an awesome job setting that up. Oh, really? I mean, give credit to him. I give a shout out to him on the podcast here. That's my shout out to him. Yeah. Um, let's talk Seahome. I mean, obviously you guys had a. I mean, you guys battled Seahome tough last year. I mean, it was a really tight game. Um, you know the Veer. Um, so what is your initial thoughts when you play Seahome? Well, you know, I, they, they've done a great job installing that offense. Uh, you know, I know Coach, uh, Coach DeWall calls it USA football. Uh, you can look back at, at some some notes on him on that one up something's rear end I think is what he's talking about just running it downhill at you and that's what they're going to try to do and uh, they do a good job of it they got a couple the two brothers coming back the Kenny boys are uh, really good fit yep uh, both really good football players uh, they know they lost some linemen but they've done a great job cranking them out and they get those kids to come off the ball something fierce uh, so that I, I think it'll be a good game you know we again Tight, tight game last year, had our opportunity, missed a field goal at the end of the game or whatever, and gave up a, a, a pitch, or as it was, gave up a pitch uh, for a long touchdown. And, and uh, you know, got to find a way to to fight through at those times to uh, to get those wins. Close uh, them out. Mm-hmm. Talk about, you know, I mean, because I know Seaholm and Adams run the same offense, the Veer offense. Um Mm-hmm. Any differences at all you see between and you played against both Adams and um Seahome. So any differences between the two teams when it comes to your offense? Yeah, there's some subtle differences. They use different formations at times. Uh, you know, Seahome will go with a little bit more unbalanced and things of that nature. Um and Seahome also uh seems to motion a lot more. Um they they really do a good job of timing up that mo- motion right before the snap or or uh, that you know, guys running real hard, sprinting through it. There, there's some subtle differences, uh, but you know, I think at the end of it, it's it's boils down to responsibility football. Everyone playing their gap, taking their responsibility, and trusting their teammates behind them. And that's oh, and that's and that's what you got to do, especially in that type of offense. And imagine yourself being a defensive coordinator. That's probably one of the most hardest offenses to stop is the veer offense, you know, that and the wing T offense. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and, uh, you know, those can be tricky offenses. They, they want to 
cashing on deception and and uh, and, and cashing on some you know being unique. I'll call it unique offenses that you don't see all the time. So it definitely takes some time to prepare for. Uh, you know, we work on it during uh, doubles even just to get the concepts in. That way, when it comes back for um, comes comes to game week, it's something the kids can draw upon. But it, it requires everybody's ultimate focus, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about Troy Athens. Obviously, when you look at the Red Hawks, um, last year, I mean, last two years, I mean, Troy Athens, they've had over 500 records, but haven't made the playoffs. I mean, like, they've scored more than they've allowed. So what's your initial thoughts on Troy Athens? Well, you know, that we ended up beating them last year. They were, I think, five and four. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure had they, had they beaten us, they would have found their way into the playoffs. Uh, but you could say that about any of the other losses. But, uh, you know, I think they've got, they've got a lot of kids, big, big school. they got uh, a, um, some big kids over there, too. And I, I think, you know, they seem like they, they're trending in the right direction as far as getting numbers out and building the program up. They also got a new principal over there who's a huge football guy. Yeah, Vernon so Burden. I suspect, uh, yeah, Vernon Burden, my guy. Uh, so I'd suspect that uh, they're going to get, you know, um, you know, an extra padded level of support that you might not get from uh, from an average administrator. Not that I don't know anything about the guys that are there before. I just know he'll be extra enthusiastic about about football and about sports, wrestling, track, and, and so on. So, uh, you know, I, I they, they've got a uh, they seem to be uh, trending in the right direction for sure. And that'll be very interesting. Um, that that game be very interesting as well. Um, Troy, I mean, like, what's your thoughts on the Colts last year? You guys knocked off Troy behind and Coleman at quarterback um, when Shelby got hurt. And um, and um, so what's your yeah. thoughts? So I was going to say, yeah, we were down to our third string quarterback at that point. Yeah, I remember that. And I'm going myself. How is Nord going to do this, you know, against a team that's a very formidable defense when you look at Troy last year defensively, very good formidable formidable defense. And then and then you guys went and shut shut out Troy. Um 9 nothing I think was the score of that game. Yep. Um so what is your thoughts on the Colts? What is your thoughts on them? Well, you know, we knew that we would have to do do uh you know, play play some good football to be able to beat them. Um, they had they, last year they had a really good wide receiver and uh, another uh, defensive back that come up and hit, and and they had some other guys on defense. They played real tough in there. And uh, I, I remember I got some I got a little crap from my buddy who who lives out of state who was watching the game, and he said, "Oh my God, you went for it on fourth down from like your own thirty yard line." I go, "Yeah, like <laughs> it was fourth and short and." we needed to get something going to, uh, to keep the ball away from them a little bit and uh, be able to get out, get the win uh, in a tight game. Um, you know, obviously we thought we could have played better at times, get, didn't have some, op- missed some opportunities, but uh, you know, down to the third string quarterback and uh, you know, kind of a little bit of a running back by committee. I thought the guys all stepped up and, uh, and got the job done, um, you know, to score some points and keep, keep the keep uh, the time of possession in our favor. If that was me, if I was like your buddy, you know what I mean? Like your friend there, <laughs> I would have said like, what are you doing? You know, I'm going for it on fourth down and like from your own third. Go like, what, what are you said. doing? He said, what were you thinking with a, with a nice uh, little jab at me? But uh, you know, the thing was when I was on the headsets, I go, well, what do you think? Should we go for it? And, and I think the, you know, John Atkinson, our defense coordinator, is like, yeah. Eric Johnson, our special coordinator, is like, yeah. And then Coach Harrington's like, yes. Who Coach Harrington and I got some similar philosophies where you usually don't take too many risks like that. But uh, I, I kind of felt the same way, and it was nice to have the support of the other coaches. It, 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 it reaffirms that decision. I mean, like, if imagine if you don't get it. I mean, you're going to get a lot of grief if you don't get it on fourth down, <laughs> you know? Definitely, definitely would have gotten a ton of grief, uh, you know. But sometimes you got to take chances like that. And I felt like uh, I felt like we could 
we could move the ball just a little bit, gain a few more, just gain the yard that it took. I think we only had like six inches to go. It was, it was really close. And uh, thankfully the guys got the job done, so I didn't look so foolish. I mean, like, I mean, like, I'm just thinking to myself, just imagine if, I mean, like, if they don't get it, I'm going like, uh-oh, you know what I mean? That would have been bad, you know, for yeah. your defense. Um, talk about program strength. Um, obviously, when you look at program strength, um, how has the program strength been going on the um, lower levels with the JVs, with the uh, middle school programs? How's that been going? We're, we're, we're starting to get back there. Um, uh, so, you know, our roster – kind of breaks down where we still have a little bit of a smaller, not necessarily not talented, but a smaller senior class. Um, but the, the other two levels are more, more normal size, you know, 20 kids or so 25 kids per level, which is about right for a school of our size. We obviously we always want more, but uh, you know, our, our goal is about 120 in the program. And I think last year we, we had around, you know, 80 something. So we got some work to do there, but, it's starting to come back on. You get more and more kids coming back to sports, uh, especially coming out of the, the pandemic um, as that kind of winds down. So our, our middle school programs are doing good. They've got, you know, solid numbers. And then I'm really excited about our relationship with the NFWB Vikings. The, uh, the, the, um, their numbers are, have gone up tremendously. Um, I think they had a waiting list, as a matter of fact, this year. Uh, so that that's encouraging for the sport of football when you think about the bigger picture, you know, not just about, you know, North Farmington football, but the bigger picture of football and kids playing the sport and believing it and, and trusting the coaches and trusting that you can do this safely and you can play and you can have so much fun and you can learn so much about yourself and, and becoming tougher and, and the team aspect and all those, all those great things that come from sport and particularly from football, obviously uh, that brotherhood of sorts. Um, uh, you start to see more and more kids get back into it and, and get excited about it. And that is a lot of people are excited about, you know what I mean? Is to see the numbers come back up, especially after the pandemic, the way it's been. Um, you did make a change this year with your uniforms. And it's something I'm really, really happy about is, you changed the helmets, you know, you went to a yellow helmet. I, I love that. Yeah. I love yeah, that. Right. You know, I, I was excited about it too. When we first came over from North, we wanted to have the yellow helmet. Uh, when we came over from Harrison to North, we wanted to have the yellow helmet because that's what North Farmington had for 30, 40 years. It was only recently that it changed white. And then uh, our AD at the time, with budgets and things of that nature that were going on felt like it'd be better to remain with white helmets. Uh, that way they could share with us in Farmington and the middle schools, uh, as needed. But, uh, finally they, they've, they've come around to the idea of it and, I, and they've seen that it can work. You know, the, you got to have a little overage at any school anyhow. And there was an opportunity for one of the middle schools to turn into a yellow helmet. So we could even share with them if there, if that was a concern, uh, that might happen down the road, but we'll, we'll wait and see. But I think the yellow look is really good for our program on the helmets. Uh, they, um, they, uh, you know, that's the way it was for many, 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 many years at North Farmington. And, and you know, I think it's something that uh, distinguishes us as, uh, as a program a little bit. And we even got different decals and things like that with the crest and mm -hmm. the number and all that. Um, when you look at the jerseys, obviously, you know, you got, you still got the brown uniform. You still got, you got like a new white uniform I, I saw from last year. Um, yeah, so we, have, we actually have three uniforms, three, three different concepts. Uh, we, we've got a, uh, a black top Adidas with, we went to Adidas, uh, and, and they, I thought they did a really good job with them. Uh, a black uniform with brown writing, uh, with the Wyoming style writing and uh, some nice, you know, uh, insignia on there. And, and they turned out really sharp. The, those black Adidas uniform with, and I like the, the touch of Brown in there to tie into, tie into the school colors and, and make that, uh, make us all feel one. And then, and then uh, we have an all white Adidas, um, uh, kind of the reverse of the, of the black with a few, a few little changes and then we still have an alternate uniform 
that we're going with a uh, an all yellow. Um, uh, Zenith no longer makes them, but that's that was the brand that we went with. Uh, but to mock that up the same way, uh, so it'll be a yellow uh, with kind of like the I, I would call it the um, the LSU shoulder strap, you know. The LSU shoulder straps, like they were with the LSU look, you know. <laughs> yeah, kind of like an LSU look. All right. Um, before I let you go, um, Coach, um, Coach Herstein, um, what is your thought expectations heading into the year? Obviously, when you look at North, you know what I mean. People look at, you know, oh, before I let you go, um, how is how is Coach Harrington doing? I mean, like obviously, I, I've always wanted to know how um Coach John Harrington's been doing along with your staff. I mean, like the expectations. How how is John Harrington doing? Oh, he's doing fantastic. You know, he's as sharp as ever. Uh, you know, he, he's up in the booth. He's out at practices. You know, still, I'll be honest. Like coming over from Harrison to to North, not much had changed really from the coaching style as far as uh, as far as what what our responsibilities were. The only difference is now I get the final say on the offense, where you know, coach coach did before, but. He's still as involved as ever. Uh, you know, what a, what a guy just loves football, loves kids, loves to loves to see kids develop, you know, uh, and what a resource for our program. He, he's going to be at the OAA Media Day uh, this this Friday. He's gonna I will be, be there, the, too. The keynote. Yeah, he'll be the keynote speaker. Coach uh, uh, Eric Vernon from Rochester reached out and, and, and asked if Coach could be able to do it. Thankfully, Coach said yes. Uh, I, you know, he's such a humble guy. At first, he's like, I don't know. You know, I don't want to. I go, Coach, it'll be a great opportunity for, uh, for you to kind of share some knowledge with the other coaches within the league and, and the players that are that are there representing their schools and what an honor that is for them, you know, to be to be chosen as uh, as guys to um, to be there for their programs. I'm going to be very curious to see what he, what he gets to say on Friday at, the, at OA Media Day. Um, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations this year heading into the season for North Farmington? And what do you have to say to OA Nation, um, this year about the Raiders? Uh, you know, I, my expectations is that we finish games. You know, we've talked about that all year long. You finish the rep, you finish what you're doing. Uh, you finish, you finish the drill, you know, you stay in and you play until the end. So that, that's, that's my expectation, you know? And whatever happens, you know, win loss, you know, I, I think we can compete with all the teams on the schedule. There's some really good ones on there that will make it uh, an exciting challenge. But uh, I, I want to see our guys play through the whistle, finish games out, and uh, and execute the way that they're capable of. Any mantras this year? Any uh, finish? Finish. <laughs> We're looking to finish. <laughs> finish. <laughs> That that's, been, good... that's been our kryptonite the last two years. So we're, we're that's our mantra. We're looking to finish. That's good. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the season how it goes. Um, North Pharmacy coach John Herstein, um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. Um, I will see you at Media Day on Friday. Um, get an interview for the preview show coming up um, in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you so much, Sammy, and thank you, OAA Nation. Okay, that was North Farmington coach John Herstein here talking, um, talking about the um, about the Raiders um, coming into the season. I'm very excited with North Farmington coming into the year. Um, a lot of expectations, a lot of optimism surrounding the Raiders. So that's something to really watch for going into the season. Um, before I let everybody go here, make sure you follow the blog at second of forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. A media coming up on Friday. We got a big in it. We got um got Tyler Clapp. We got um Coach Doug Corliss coming on here um next week. I will um talk to them about the season and we'll see what happens. All right, everyone signing off here. Um, take care. God bless. Make sure you follow the blog at Sign Up Forty Six Fifty at Blogspot.com for latest information around the OA. All right, everyone signing off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. See you then.